So we continue our daily readings. All right, we're reading the occult classics, and today we continue our reading of the three books of occult philosophy by Heinrich Cornelius Agrippa. And this is book one, Natural Magic. Um, and this was published in 1531. So this is... Uh, one of the this is a work on magic from the 16th century chapter 5 of the wonderful natures of fire and earth there are two things saith hermes that is fire and earth which are sufficient for the operation of all wonderful things the former is active the latter passive Fire, as saith Dionysius, in all things and through all things comes and goes away bright. It is in all things bright, and at the same time occult and unknown. Talking about fire, the element of fire. When it is by itself, no other matter coming to it in which it should manifest its proper action, it is boundless and invisible of itself sufficient for every action that is proper to it, movable, yielding itself after a manner to all things that come next to it, renewing, guarding nature, enlightening, not comprehended by lights that are veiled over, clear, parted, leaping back, bending upwards, quick in motion, high, always raising motions, comprehending another, not comprehended itself not standing in need of another, secretly increasing of itself, and manifesting its greatness to things that receive it, active, powerful, invisibly present in all things at once. It will not be affronted or opposed, but as it were in a way of revenge, it will reduce on a sudden things into obedience to itself, incomprehensible, impalpable, not lessened, most rich in all dispensations of itself. Fire, as saith Pliny, is the boundless and mischievous part of the nature of things. The boundless and the mischievous part of the nature of things. It being a question whether it destroys or produceth most things. Fire itself is one and penetrates through all things as saith the pythagoreans also spread abroad in the heavens and shining but in the infernal place straightened dark and tormenting in the midway it partakes of both fire therefore in itself is one but in that which receives it manifold and in differing subjects it is distributed in a different manner. As Cleanthes witnesseth in Cicero, that fire then which we use is fetched out of other things. That fire then which we use is fetched out of other things. It is in stones. It is fetched out by the stroke of the steel. It is in earth and makes that after digging up to smoke. It is in water and heat springs and wells. It is in the depth of the sea and makes that being tossed with winds warm. It is in the air and makes it as we often time see to burn. And all animals and living things whatsoever and also all vegetables are preserved by heat and everything that lives lives by reason of the enclosed heat. The properties of the fire that is above are heat, making all things fruitful, and light, giving life to all things. The properties of the infernal fire are a parched heat, consuming all things, <clears throat> and darkness, making all things barren. The celestial and bright fire drives away spirits of darkness. Also, okay, this part is interesting. I'm going to put a little comment here. This part is interesting. This gives um, a reason why in magic you always light a candle. 
you always light a candle when you're doing magic. You always have a candle or a lamp present. So anyways, I'm going to read this. You hear many traditional grimoire magicians. They always have a candle or a lamp when they do prayers or magic. This is why. So this is Agrippa, Three Books of Occult Philosophy, Book 1, Chapter 5. It says here, let's do this, okay. The properties of the fire that is above, the celestial or divine fire, the properties of the fire that is above are heat making all things fruitful, and light, giving life to all things. The divine fire. The properties of the infernal fire are a parched heat, consuming all things in darkness, making all things barren. The celestial and bright fire drives away spirits of darkness. Also, this our fire made with wood drives away the same. So, fire, this our fire made with wood drives away evil spirits. So, the celestial and bright fire drives away spirits of darkness. Also, this our fire made with wood driveth, drives away the same, inasmuch as it hath analogy with and is the vehiculum of that superior light, as also of him who saith, I am the light of the world which is true fire, the father of lights, from whom every good thing that is come, given comes, sending forth the light of his fire, and communicating it first to the sun, S-U-N, and the rest of the celestial bodies, and by these, as by mediating instruments, conveying that light into our fire. So that is just really iconic. I want to read that one more time. That is really cool. Okay. The properties of the fire that is above. Very rarely in reading Agrippa, well, I'm not going to bind myself to that. Am I going to read again and again? But this one time, I want to reread that. Check this out. Okay. The celestial and bright fire drives away spirits of darkness. Also this our fire, I just heard a pop and so, <laughs> also this our fire made with the wood drives away the same. Inasmuch as it hath an analogy with and is the vehiculum of that superior light, as also of him who saith, I am the light of the world, which is, which is true fire, the father of lights from whom every good thing that is given comes, sending forth the light of his fire and communicating it first to the sun, S-U-N, communicating it first to the sun, sending forth the light of his fire and communicating it first to the sun and the rest of the celestial bodies, and by these, as by mediating instruments, conveying that light into our fire made with wood below. So you're getting this idea of the divine fire from God, the celestial fire of the sun and stars, and then the, the elemental fire with wood or whatever or a lamp here below. So using Agrippa in his uh, Renaissance, you know, 16th century mindset, this is the fire. The true fire is the divine fire in the archetypal realm. Beyond the divine fire, like I said, the celestial fire of the stars, and then like the fire we have here. Okay. As therefore the spirits of darkness are stronger in the dark, so good spirits, which are angels of light, are augmented, not only by that light which is divine, of the sun, S-U-N, and celestial, but also by the light of our common fire. Hence it was that the first and most wise institutors of religions and ceremonies ordained that prayers, singings, and all manner of divine worships whatsoever should not be performed without lighted candles or torches. Hence also was that significant saying of Pythagoras, Do not speak of God without a light. And they commanded that for the driving away of wicked spirits, lights and fires should be kindled by the corpses of the dead. 
and that they should not be removed until the expiations were and after a holy manner performed and they buried and the great jehovah himself in the old law commanded that all his sacrifices should be offered with fire and that fire should always be burning upon the altar which custom the priests of the altar did always observe and keep amongst the romans now the basis and foundation of all the elements is the earth for that is the object so check this out now the basis and foundation of all the elements is the earth for that is the object subject and receptacle of all celestial rays and influences in it are contained the seeds and seminal virtues of all things and therefore it is said to be animal vegetable and mineral it being made fruitful by the other elements and the heavens brings forth all things of itself it receives the abundance of all things and is as it were the first fountain from whence all things spring so it's talking about the earth being the most receptive it receives the rays and then produces out of itself is like a womb so now the basis and foundation of all the elements is the earth for that is the object subject and receptacle of all celestial rays and influences and in it are contained the seeds and seminal virtues of all things and therefore it is said to be animal vegetable and mineral it being made fruitful by the other elements and the heavens brings forth all things of itself it receives the abundance of all things and is as it were the first fountain from whence all things spring it is the center foundation and mother of all things take as much of it as you please separated washed depurated stabilized if you let it lie in the open air a little while it will being full and abounding with heavenly virtues of itself bring forth plants worms and other living things also stones and bright sparks of metals and it are great secrets if at any time it shall be purified by the help of fire and reduced unto its simplicity by a convenient washing it is the first matter of our creation and the truest medicine that can restore and preserve us so that is uh cornelius agrippa and that is chapter five and uh, we're going to continue working through our readings and i will see y'all in the next video thanks for tuning in y'all see y'all in the next video thank you so much y'all